on, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of JAR. JAR, for those of you that may be new, stands for Joe. And Amy. Review. And this is our now twice weekly, but only for a little bit, show where we review the magic stories. <laughs> it's usually weekly. But anyway, this week we are here for the finale of the main story for Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, Episode 5, Threads of War by Akami Don Bowman. This story, I guess my quick review at the top, uh, I actually really liked this one. Um, we'll talk about why and all the different reasons and stuff, but yeah, I, I think this was the best of all of the ones that we've read so far. Um, I guess I enjoyed the saga stories as well, but for different reasons. But I think story-wise and content-wise, this was definitely my favorite, personally. Yeah, I have to agree that it was uh, s more substantial, more happened in it. Yeah. Yeah, and we can get into this in the full review as well, but it, unlike some other finales that we've experienced before, it didn't feel like things were crammed in and rushed through because, well, it's the fifth story and we need to finish it, so here's all of this stuff, and, like, you know, it's just, like, information vomit right. onto the into the story. It, it's, it worked well, it paced nicely, and I, I really liked it, so... Um, the reason we give our quick review at the top is because if you have not had a chance to read this story for yourself, or if you want a f refresher on the story, uh, the top link in the description down below will take you to this story, so you don't have to go searching for it, remove as many barriers as possible, that's what we do here on this show. So definitely feel free to go check that out, and of course we would love it if you would then come back here and join us so that we can continue the discussion together, um, because as always, any thoughts that you have on this story and or on any of our opinions regarding this story, we would love to hear them down in the comments below. Keep the conversation going. Before we get to the full review itself, hi, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. Please don't forget while you're here, if you enjoy the things that we do on this channel in any capacity, it would be great if you would subscribe and ring that bell so that you will get notifications whenever any of our videos come out and whenever we go live every Monday and Friday for our streams, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on this channel. If you're a fan of Magic the Gathering, which you likely are, at least the game of Magic the Gathering as opposed to the story, or in conjunction with the story, like us, um, we play Magic the Gathering Arena every Monday. Usually limited, but sometimes other things, as you saw if you were here for this past Monday's stream. Uh, and then Fridays we play whatever video game we happen to be playing through at the time. This Friday we will be continuing our playthrough of X-Men Legends 2, Rise of Apocalypse for the PlayStation 2. So uh, definitely feel free to join us for that as well. On the PlayStation 2. What did I say? Oh yes, on the yes for the PlayStation 2 on the PlayStation 2. No, you're absolutely right. We have a PlayStation 2 that Correct. we're playing it on. Correct. Yeah, not emulated or any of that. Right. Yes, it's on the actual PS2, so, you know any hardware issues, you'll be right here with us for them. <laughs> it's really just the load screens, let's be real. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, of course, we would love that. And then, don't forget, we have other channels linked down in the description box below as well, in Video Games for All and Gluten Free for All. Um, over on Video Games for All, last Sunday, we just finished our full blind playthrough of Detroit Become Human which was fantastic, so the whole playlist is available every episode, so definitely go check that out. And the storyline finale of Pokemon Silver, Amy's blind playthrough first time ever of the second generation of Pokemon in general, is now done. Amy just finished facing Red. That video premiered on Tuesday, and so if you have not checked that out, uh, we already have... Um, some of the reviews and opinions and etc. coming in for that story, uh, and so you should definitely check it out. I highly encourage it, because it was a hell of a ride. <laughs> but, that all being said, thank you for uh, giving us that moment to, to let you know about all those things, and we really do appreciate any and all support that you're willing to give. Don't forget, likes and shares go a long way as well. Thank you. So, on to the full review itself. <sighs> this story... <clears throat> rightfully so, especially with all the information that's in it, gets right to it. The story starts with a big fight. Uh, the Wanderer's in a fight, Kaito's in a fight, Tamio's in a fight, they're all doing different things. 
Jenga Taxi, as we are reminded, is basically cut in half right. and lying on the ground. And until we see him at the end, he ha he does nothing in this story at all. And we only see him once he is, I, it seems, on Phyrexia um, with Tezzeret and Tamio. And so otherwise, he is inconsequential to the story at all. It's just, he's broken in half on the floor. The next time we hear about him, we hear that he's not in the lab anymore when they come back to check. And then we actually hear from him later when he's, you know, enacting his evil plan. Mm -hmm. Or the evil plan. It's not just his. But, um, but yet, yeah, uh, Tamio is dealing with Tezzeret and Kaito and the Wanderer are fighting the um, hired goons or the hired help uh, from Jenga Taxius. I, I wanted to talk, I found this very interesting. The story in the beginning is sort of being told from the Wanderer's perspective. It's not like first person omnipotent necessarily, but it's being told from the Wanderer's perspective and they keep calling her the Wanderer. Yeah. But later on, when it's told from Kaito's perspective, he keeps mentally calling her the Emperor. Right. I just found that so interesting. So does that mean that the Wanderer refers to herself as the Wanderer, as opposed to the Emperor? I think it's just that MTG refers to her as the Wanderer to its audience. And Kaito refers to her as the Emperor because but, she is his Emperor. But it's... but it. I guess. I don't know, man. It just seemed very odd to me. Like, because my, my question is, if that is what she calls herself, when did she start calling herself that? When did that happen? At what point after her leaving Kamigawa did she say, you know what? I'm the Wanderer now. I'm no longer the Emperor of Kamigawa. Like, there was that decade that she was gone for. At what point did she do that? Did she change in her mind if she did? Because I still... Uh, your I mean, point... I feel like this story kind of told us that she didn't. Okay, how so? Uh, because, like, she's, I mean, she still put Light, pa Light Paws in charge as her proxy. Yeah. She didn't say, you're the new emperor now. You should have been all along. Sorry about it. You know, she said, you'll rule in my stead when I can't be here, despite the fact that for the last ten years I wasn't here. Like, I don't know. Okay. So, I don't think she calls herself the Wanderer. All right. Let us know your thoughts, as always. And that she's not the Emperor. Um, oh, speaking of the Wanderer, and speaking of uh, you kind of voicing more um, opinions and etc., uh, you wanted to talk about the bit where the Wanderer kind of mentally discusses, right? Because she doesn't openly say this, but kind of mentally working over the fact that she doesn't want to open her heart to being home, to being on this plane, to yeah. seeing Kaito and being with Kaito um, and others as well. But spe she specifically calls out Kaito, of course, right. um, until she knows that she can stay on the plane. Because it's kind of up in the air whether the reality chip is going to be able to stay in her hand or whether she's going to have to destroy it or take it out or whatever. And then will that continue to destabilize her spark? Will she be allowed to stay? Blah, blah, blah. Because... Basically, she knows that tearing down that wall would mean that she would be so deeply hurt if she then had to leave again mm -hmm. that she kind of is purposefully keeping it up. And I know you wanted to talk a bit about that, so. Yeah, I mean, I just, um, yeah, it's really sad and hard. So it makes it difficult for me to say, well, you know, this is just avoidance. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, eventually she's going to have to deal with it. And then, um, you know, it's all going to be ripped from her again, you know. And she knows that. And so she's trying to... Uh, it, um, it, it at least answered the question of last time, which was why is she being like so flippant about her 
reuniting with Kaito and Kamigawa True. as a whole. True. Um, that's why. Yeah. Because she doesn't want to deal with the pain. Uh, but, you know, that's not the healthy thing to do. <laughs> also um, true. It is a normal response, I'll say that. Well, I will also point out, it was perfectly contrasted, though. Because this we hear about towards the beginning of the story. At the end of the story, when the Wanderer does have to leave, not by any, not by any choice of her own, it mentions that as soon as she disappears and Kaito doesn't get to hear her finish her, fr her phrase or sentence or whatever you want to call it, his, it says his heart shattered into a million pieces yeah. because he never put that wall up. He was always right. looking for her. He was always thinking about what their reunion would be like because he was always trying to find her. And then once he found her, he was all in. It was like, my friend's back again. I can't wait to have these moments. And right. they had small moments together, little joking, like banter here mm -hmm. and there, back and forth as if it were old times. He got to have a little bit of kind of physical contact with her in whatever capacity was like acceptable, right? Uh, to both of them. And now she's about to say something to him. Like the first, seemingly the first or possibly the first real thing that she has said to him about feelings or emotions since she's been back in 10 years, maybe in their entire relationship right. because she was always the emperor and they had to talk through the silk barrier right. or whatever. So she was always at arm's length. Yes. Him. Yes. And then she finally says, Kaito, and then gone. Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> that sucks. Especially, I mean, look, you can know, based on a person's body language the way, and or, like, inflection, the way that they say your name, unless they're purposefully trying to, um, like, trick you. The way that somebody says your name, if that's the start of a sentence, you have a general idea of where that sentence is going. Yeah. And or at least, at least what... Um, at least how they feel. What tone that sentence is going to be, yes. And so I'm sure she wasn't like Kaito. Like that's not nice. that's not how that sentence started, right? It was a a soft, friendly, welcoming, loving use of his name. But that's literally all he has now. Right. That's all that he's left with for however long it takes until he finds her again. It's just yeah. It sucks. Yeah. It really <laughs> sucks. <clears throat> it's depressing. Yes. Okay. But, uh, oh, before, sorry. before Please. we change subjects... Please do, because I, um, I, I'm sure I cut you off. I apologize. Because I don't really have much else to talk about in the story, <laughs> uh, other than saying it was just good. Um, it was very good. But yeah, uh, um... It sounds like at the end of the story... Like, he's kind of resigned to not even necessarily trying to find her again. He's like, well, I'll find Tammy out Right, now. Focusing, focusing more heavily on that than on looking right. for the Wanderer at this um, point, yeah. Which, again, is more of this at arm's length, so you don't get hurt kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, and they really didn't because, the, because of the intensity uh, and importance of what they were doing uh, you know fighting and you know figuring out people's plans and all kinds of other things yeah they really didn't have um, time like you said last time mm -hmm. uh, to to have to really break down those barriers and really have um, warm, comforting, um, heartfelt conversations. Um, but even if they had had time for it, um, would they have been able to sink into them and really feel them and really enjoy them? 
if the entirety of their relationship really has been at arm's length. Um, but like you said, I think I think maybe Kaito was a lot closer to that than she was. Right. And so if he had had those opportunities, I think he probably would have jumped in with both feet. Um, and that may well have posed a problem if she wasn't ready to do the same. So... Um, you, you might say in that situation that it was a little bit of a blessing because dis <clears throat> despite how ready he was, she still wasn't. Right. And so here's to hoping that she is by the next time they meet, I guess. It sucks, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, that's the kind of thing that can ruin a relationship is some... some Buddy being all in, and the other person being like, oh, "Wait a minute now, I don't know about that." Yeah, well, it's, it's you know, and it, it can ruin a really great thing. You know, it can ruin a relationship because the person who's not as close is going to be probably going to be highly turned off by that. Just to be like, "Whoa, okay," like you know, if if they're not willing to commit, or the person that is all in is going to feel like, okay, I'm putting so much into this right. and you're not there, like... Yeah, this is not a balanced relationship right. in any kind of capacity. Right. And so either way, it's unhealthy. And right. and it might take a while for one, the other, or both to realize that, but eventually it's going to get to that point where one of the two, one of the two of them or both of them are going to be like, wait a second. Right. And, and realistically, I, I don't know how healthy it is for them to take too much more time thinking about it um, or letting it um, kind of impact their lives. Um, but I guess we'll find out. Because um, loving somebody that much as they do um, is, is going to make it really fucking difficult <laughs> to decide that waiting for them isn't worth it. So... Yep. I I did want to say if if you're done with with that point, I don't want to move on if you're not. Yeah. I did want to say if you missed last week's episode or, or not even last week's episode, right? Uh, Monday's episode <laughs> earlier on this week because we again we're doing two a week because <sighs> this Monday the streets of New Capenna stories start. We are going to finish up the side stories first, so it means that this coming Monday will be side story. There are three side stories, so the remaining. So the first of the three will be this Monday, then next Thursday will be the second of the three, and then the Monday after will be the third of the three. That's the first Monday of April. Um, and then Thursday, uh, the first Thursday of April, will be um, the first Streets of New Capenna story that comes out this Monday the 28th, So or whatever that date is. I think it's the 28th. So just be aware of that. We're doing our best to keep up with their really stupid release schedule um, and we will we will try to have that stuff out for you as quickly as we can thank you for any and all patience that you have been having with us in us getting out these stories those stories etc because um, we're, we're trying our best here and again like I said we really appreciate it anyway that being said if you missed Monday's story or review I talked about how goddamn confusing anything with the reality chip is what does it do what doesn't it do? That might be a shorter list. And again, it make the story good. It just, it's just <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. Like Tezzeret can control it, like fully control it. So, but it's an like the the card in the set is an equipment jellyfish. So, like, is it a creature? Is it a kami? Is it? Is it like a kami fused with technology, and that's what because that's what Tameshi was trying to do. Right? Was she was trying to fuse Kami with technology, but like then how does then Tezzeret can can control a Kami because it's connected with technology? And so now he has control over a living being somehow, besides the living being that he can control, aka Tamio and or the Wanderer, that the reality chip is like plugged into, sort of. But we're told that it it just enhances the powers of whoever is wielding it at the time. So I guess if Tezzeret 
had it on, it wouldn't do anything or it would do more. It's very unclear. Nope. But it's super unclear. We are told <laughs> in this story, because I talked about this in the last review as well, and I encourage you to go check that out, because I'm not going to go over that whole rant again, but here's a different rant. Hi, welcome to it. <laughs> yeah. um, we find out from Tamio slash the Wanderer that the reality chip enhances your powers. It enhances the abilities of whoever has it. So Tamio is able to use her telekinesis to move an entire mech. The Wanderer used her like wacky planeswalking ability to planeswalk on the same plane. So we did get a question from the last video and the last review answered in this story in that no, it is not just a thing that all planeswalkers can do where you can planeswalk on the same plane. Because the Wanderer specifically says, well, I'll just planeswalk back to the temple. And Kaito says, but you'll be all alone. Implying that he nor Tamio could actually follow her in doing that. So we now know definitively not a thing, right? We suspected that last time, but it wasn't definitively confirmed, and I didn't want to just say it in case there's like some old magic story from like Urza Saga or something where I, you know, I didn't remember pre mending that they could planeswalk on the same plane, which is just teleporting. It's not planeswalking at all. Because um, you're not walking the planes, you're just moving around on the same plane. And pre mending doesn't mean anything because it's pre mending. Because the mending so is a thing now, after yeah. The mending sure. it could have changed. Exactly. But also, like, um, what should I call it? That also confirmed what I wasn't sure about last time, which was that she is, in fact, able to control where she's planes walking to. Seemingly, yes, with or without the chip, because that was the other thing that confused the crap out of me. She specifically says, oh, well, I'll go to the temple and, you know, I'll planeswalk back to the temple. And Kaito's response is, but you won't have the chip anymore because they already took the chip out. So having the chip in wasn't what let her planeswalk on the same plane. So she could always do that. But she also specifically mentions that she used the chip to enhance her abilities to be able to do that in the first place. But now she mentions that she's going to use her connection to Kyodai to try to like teleport to Kyodai, but also try to stabilize her spark because of that connection somehow. But obviously it doesn't work because yeah, she then just, leaves. It just sounds like they didn't think this stuff through. It just doesn't make sense. It do, what is the, what are the powers of this thing? I don't get it. Is it everything? Like, that, you know, like... <laughs> right. Is it just whatever they need it to be? into your deepest desires. Yeah. It's, like, it's like Superman's ice breath. Like, you didn't <laughs> need it at all. No. Get the hell out of here. You already had x-ray vision, laser, laser vision, flight, super strength. Like, you don't need to breathe frost. Like, get the hell out of here. I, it just... I'm sure I'm missing more confusing BS. Like... Yeah. <sighs> Because there's a lot of it. Yeah, I just don't understand it. And it's not just in this story, it's in all of them. Also, also, I was frustrated by, I mean, let's let's talk a bit about story spotlight cards again. Last week we talked about them, or last episode we talked about them a bit. Let's talk about them a little bit more. So, Anchor to Reality was in the last story. In this story, we finally had the art to Kaito's pursuit. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess it worked. It's the third time we've had a Kaito pursuing Tezzeret mentioned over the rooftops. Okay, that's fine. They're not numbered anymore, so I can't complain that it was in the wrong spot. Right. Or whatever. It was just kind of weird. It's that just it was that, yeah. In the third appearance of that. Well, and again, I'm exaggerating only slightly. It, it happened once in like the first story. Uh, of the main story, so episode one. And then Kaito references it in a later story, references that exact pursuit in a later story where I was like, oh, cool, so now they'll use the pit. No, they didn't use the picture. And then now that he's pursuing him across the rooftops again, and Tezzeret references, we've been here before, and now they use the art. Okay, I guess, I guess I have to be okay with that. That's fine. Confusing, but fine. So fine. 
Because again, they're not numbered, so I can't be like, well, it's technically out of order. It's not. It's fine. But let's talk about Anchor to Reality. The flavor text on Anchor to Reality, I could look it up and get the exact quotation of the flavor text. I don't think I need to. It says something to the effect of, like, the reality chip uh, stabilized the Wanderer's spark. She looks super happy as she's putting it in her hand. I guess that's a, a true statement. And again, the story spotlight cards aren't numbered, so I guess, because it's not the final story spotlight, Tamiyo's completion would be, technically. Uh, um, but it just... She put the thing on her hand, and it, it, it allowed her to stay on the plane, but it also made her be controlled. So then she took it out, and then Tamiyo put it in, and then Tamiyo was controlled, and then now the bad guys have it, and Tamiyo, like... I just hate it. I hate, I feel like I hate the reality chip. Truly yep. hate it. Like, I, I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. There, It's not properly um, explained in any capacity, even though, again, I mentioned this last time, even though the planeswalkers seem to fully understand it. Right. If they had no clue, then it would be okay. Because they don't get it either, right. and so eventually it will likely be explained to us. But all they've done is explain it to us, and it makes less sense now than it did when I saw it in the card <laughs> art before we read the stories to begin with. Yeah. It's so frustrating. So, again, as I said last time, if you want to do it this time, if you have some type of an explanation for the reality chip that... I mean, if you want to write a novel, you I will read every word of it. I promise you. <laughs> so feel free to leave it in the comments. But uh, God bless you if you yeah. are willing to try to decipher it. Like, I I can't. I can't do it. So, oh, it's so frustrating. <laughs> okay, I'm moving on from that unless you have more to talk about with that. Because yeah. it frustrates the shit no, out of I me. No, I think we've beaten a dead horse. <laughs> Let's talk about Rizona. Rizona has been mentioned a couple of times, the leader of the Uprisers, right? I really loved Rizona's confrontation with the Wanderer. Because the Wanderer, in her own mind, is like, okay, I mean, I'm fighting this chick, but... I've, like... She is on par with me before I left. Right. But now, I've trained on, ev like, multiple planes. Right. Like... She's got nothing on me now. Right. And that's so correct, right? <laughs> like, it's true. It's super correct. Because yeah. it's just like, I am super powerful. I was pretty good before I left. Now I've learned all these other techniques from all these other planes that will never be on Kamigawa, ever. Mm -hmm. And so it's nothing that um, Rizona could possibly prepare for at all. Right. And so the Wanderer's just like, oh yeah, she's doing that. All right, I'll sidestep. All right. And and says, I could have killed her forever ago. <laughs> like, I just as soon as it started, she would have been dead. Right. I could have just stabbed her right through the heart at any moment. But what the Wanderer was trying to do was, like, tire her out so that she could essentially, like, do what she did and show her unconscious body to the rest of the fighters and be like, okay, fight's over, here she is. And they did do that eventually, but, like, Kyodai is trying to tempt her and be like, don't, you know, she's not going to stop. She, right. she doesn't care, but it works out. But I appreciated that moment of just, like, planeswalker versus plane-bound individual. It almost doesn't matter. Like, if they're both, if they're both fighters of some kind, right? Right. Right. If it's like Jace versus Rizona, no, he's not going to beat her in a, a sword fight. Although I guess he could read her mind of like, oh, I'm gonna, she's gonna swipe this way. I guess I'll dodge. Right. But like, it, a, a sword to sword fight, it's not really going to work out for a non-combatant in that way. But for two fighters, if one of them's a planeswalker that has been to multiple planes and fought there, right. and one is a plane-bound individual, you're not beating her or him. Right. That's just not how it works. Like, yep. So I appreciated that. I thought that the, the kind of governmental discussion or the political science-y discussion was cool for the short moment that it occurred, um, and then it kind of ended just as swiftly. But 
we heard a fair bit about that in like the Planeswalker's Guide and stuff like that. So I appreciated it. I appreciated that it was there. I thought it was appropriately touched on without, again, bogging down this finale story. And it could have done that a lot. Um, but I think for folks who prefer or appreciate political intrigue, it was probably a little too teasy. Yeah. Where it like just touched on it and then it was like, but... She's done now, and so we're done as well. I'm just going to appoint a new person and move on. <laughs> like, yeah, it was very much like, oh, we're going to do this, and yeah. it's going to be cool, and then they didn't do it. Yep. Um, I I found it a little odd, right? We have the, the moment where the Wanderer leaves. Again, not of her choice, right. but she has to leave, so she leaves. Tamio's gone, and Kaito is left behind. And based on the kind of line delineating passage of time, that was a long time. Like, he mentions, oh, the wall's almost fully back up. How long did that take? Like, even if you had a ton of people working on it, that's not a one-day thing. Yeah. Like, you have to clean that up all that rubble. significant passage yeah. of time. Yeah, so I'm surprised, because he mentions the fact that he went to, or it mentions the fact, that he went and told Tamio's family, mm -hmm. which sucks. Right. Um, I also, I'm actually curious of your thoughts on this too. I didn't ask you before we started. What are your thoughts on the story kind of implying that Nashi is going to do something about Tamio missing or the Wanderer missing? It, it like, it like skated the line of like, you're the man of the house now. And I hate right. that shit okay. so much. I thought it was, um, like a like a foreshadowing planeswalker thing. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I feel like that would be a little much, in my opinion. Okay. I, I mean, I, if it happens, fine, okay. I guess. Cool. Um, but yeah, I think that'd be a little much, where it's like, Nashi, this character that lost his home and parents to Tezzeret, a planeswalker, and then was adopted by Tamio, a planeswalker, and was informed of his mother's, his adopted mother's, um, lack of presence, missing, she's missing. <laughs> I, I didn't know how to word that sentence, I'm so sorry. Uh, by Kaito, a planeswalker, and now he's going to be a planeswalker? Like, it, it seems a little too convenient. Of course it would be cool. I'm not saying you're, like, that's ridiculous. I'm not right, saying but. it would be cool. I agree. <laughs> it's a lot and kind of unnecessary, probably. <laughs> but that's just what I thought that was. Okay. Yeah, it just, to me, like I said, to me it, like, skirted the line of, like, Kaito saying, like, you're, you know, and... Sorry, it's not Kaito, because Kaito tried to not say this, but Nashi was like, I'm gonna, when I'm old enough, I'm gonna do this, and Kaito was like, okay, well, cool, and like said, said like a, a reassuring thing to him right. about it, and that's fine, because like, that's what the kid said, and it's not Kaito's job now to be like, well, son, now listen, right. blah, 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 like, that's not his role, right. but at the same time, it's like, don't glorify that shit. I no. hate that. Where it's like, well, your parent is gone. Time for you, child, to step up and be the adult now. No. Nope. No, it's not. It's still a child. It's inaccurate. Yes. <laughs> right. And I mean, again, right, seeking therapy is a thing that, that children should be able to do in situations like that. But that's that's a whole different discussion. That's not really yes, what I'm getting they into. they would need a lot less therapy if they didn't have to compensate for their parents well, in I, so many different respects. Right. I just, I just more so mean, like, if, if the child comes to the conclusion, because it seems like that's what Nashi did here, mm -hmm. that Nashi was the one to say, well, I'll step up as soon as I can. And it's like, that's, again, that's not Kaito's job to tell Nashi that that's not okay. That would be some type of a mental health professional's job to say, hey, by the way, how about you be a child first? Like, right. let's live your childhood and let's do that. And like, like I said, that's a, a whole different discussion. But like, I, I would just like it stated for the record that that shit bothers me. <laughs> and so <Agreed. laughs> I, I put it out there. And <laughs> Agreed. Because even when... A child says, I want to be an adult now, um, for a lot of things, okay? A lot of things. 
like almost anything, <laughs> I would be the first to probably say that when a child is asking about doing something, that means they're ready to do it. Mm -hmm. This is not one of those times. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Okay. <laughs> um, stepping up and filling a role because your parent is missing is not an acceptable thing for a child to have to do or to even want to do. Um, because it will, it, it will cause mental health issues. Yeah. There's pretty much no way around that. Yeah. And, and, um, and you can, like, again, try to mitigate that in some capacity or whatever. Of but. course. Yeah. By, by reinstating someone new as a guardian. Um, you know, there are a myriad of things you can do. Yeah. But uh, I'm not going to go into that now. Fair. Yeah, it's just, again, it, if, like, that's how it... It skirted that line. It was, and that's how I felt when I read it. I was like, uh, like it made me cringe a little bit on the inside. Cause I was just like, don't, don't do that. Don't, yeah. don't do that thing. Like I get it that Nashi's like the only kid that we really talked about this time around. So of course Nashi is going to be the one who's going to have something to say to Kaito. Right. But like, don't have it be that. I don't, I don't. Yeah, it's I messed don't. up. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So anyway, let's talk about Tamiyo then. Since we're since we're doing that, we'll we'll close up talking about Tamio and Tamio's completion. I mentioned a few weeks ago at this point, um, or a few episodes ago, that I do not like that Tamio was the one who was completed. Right. I don't. I think broadly, the fact that she is the one with the metal scrolls that she talks about, or the iron scrolls that she swore never to use, and she has already used one through the manipulation of your girl and we're cool. Right. And the fact that it took until the end of the finale for us to be reminded that those Iron Scrolls even exist, that is a good thing. That is a good bit of foreshadowing to the fact that, like, hey, by the way, these Iron Scrolls could be used to the for the betterment of Phyrexia, or the furtherance of the Phyrexians' plan. All right. Because the way that they have Tamio here at the end... Tamio is saying she would do anything for her family, and now that she's been completed, the Phyrexians are her family now. Right. And I, like, I, sorry, I mentioned, I, I hinted at it earlier, but I mentioned a while ago, I don't like it because she has a family. Right. Sure, being able to relate it back to she would do anything for her family. Phyrexia is her family. She would do anything for her, like she would do anything for her kids. She would do anything for her family. Phyrexia is her family. She would do anything for her family. You know, like that that aspect was smart. It was well done there. That doesn't mean I'm okay with you. Right. Again, we just talked about the Nashi thing. That doesn't mean that I'm okay with you taking one of the two or three main parental planeswalkers and turning them into uh, an evil agent for the other side. Right. Will she get some form of a redemption arc where she is saved and uncompleted? Is that even possible? Who knows? We will find out, and hopefully that is the case, or at least hopefully there is a happy ending for her kids one way or another. Whether that be that she actually gets to come back, or we find that they get a solid parental figure to adopt them as well, and it's not a super traumatic thing for them right. to have to be adopted again in some capacity there. I have no concept. I have no idea. But that's also kind of the theme of the end of this story and the end of this arc is wait and see. But I was saying to Amy before we started filming, I like that here. Because in other stories recently, it's been like, okay, well... We're not going to see the end of this interaction until we're back on Innistrad or Kaldheim or wherever. This is not that. Tamio and Tezzeret and Jingataxius are either on Phyrexia or somewhere else, but they could show up anywhere. 
they could show up on Dominaria next set. Right. Kaito and the Wanderer and looking for Tamio could happen in the next set. It could happen in any of the upcoming sets. So that is the kind of thing where it's a good cliffhanger because it's a cliffhanger that hopefully gets resolved sooner rather than later or at least touched on again. It doesn't have to be fully resolved, but at least touched on again sooner rather than later so that we are kind of kept on the hook, so to speak, as opposed to like the Dominaria set and the Brothers War set we're just, like, it's not touched on at all. And, like, a year and a half or two years from now, they're like, hey, remember Kaito? And you're like, oh, yeah, I guess. Like, it's been two years, so it's been, like, eight sets. I guess I remember Kaito. What's going on again? Mm -hmm. And, like, you're not going to come back and read these stories. Yeah. But it it at least felt like at the end of this the one that... The authors won't either. <laughs> say that. Wow, that was good. That was really good. If you don't get that, check out our other videos. We've talked about that a lot. Um, yeah, I, I'm, it, I'm hopeful that these story threads will continue soon going forward. And because of that, I'm not as upset with the wait and see aspect of a lot of what we saw at the end of this. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go back to... Um where we were talking about Tamio's family. Please do. Um, and how it upsets you that she's the one completed. Mm -hmm. If you want to know how I felt about it, Please. it felt very strongly like the typical, well, here's a sitcom and somebody has a kid and you see the kid when it's really young and cute, but then as soon as it starts to grow up, the kid kind of isn't in any more episodes <laughs> because um, apparently it's not interesting to be a parent. It's only interesting to, um, I don't know, have a calamitous... Um, free of responsibility lifestyle. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like <laughs> like sitcoms where like the person is a parent and the, the running gag is like, where is the kid ever? Right. Like they're yeah. never taking care of their child. Right, exactly. Yeah. Or like people who are like, you know, the joke people say about like friends or whatever, where it's like, when do they ever go to work? Right. Because like <laughs> they have to pay for that like loft in Manhattan. Right. So don't they work ever? Like where are they getting all this money from? Uh, we saw a few episodes <laughs> where Ross was at work. And Chandler was in his office occasionally, but he never really said what he did. That was, that yeah. was you know, whatever. But anyway, yes, that's that, a point well taken as well. I... I, I'm not so sure. I guess we'll have to wait and see what ends up happening. Like I said, I hope it's a it's a positive ending for at least the children. Right. Right. If something happens to Tamio and it's not a positive ending for her, I would I would not be happy with that. Right. But if it's a happy ish or a positive ending for her kids, then I guess I would be okay with whatever happens to her. I have to agree with you on that as much as it's it pains me. Bare minimum, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> bare minimum. Yeah. Um, I appreciated that Elish Norn finally got a mention. Yeah. Uh, that was nice to throw that name in there. Because, again, that is the, like, of the Phyrexian Praetors from their first time around, Elish Norn is the one that has been in cubes and commander decks, I would say, the most. And I, I don't, I'm no magic expert, but... I'm relatively confident that, that I can just say that and have that be a fact. If people disagree, I would love to hear from you, of course, because, I again, not a magic expert. It's just, of all the Phyrexian Praetors that have existed, Elish Nord is the one that I have seen far and above the most often of any of them um, in between their first appearance and now. So, uh, it's nice to at least hear the name there's a reason why, right? Like, it's a very good card. In fact, we literally just dealt with an Elish Norn this past Monday on our yeah. stream. So Check it out. You can, you can watch that VOD if you're interested. Um, it was, and shout-outs to Erica. You're the best. Uh, I appreciated the emotion in this story, or the emotions that this story evoked, 
between, um, again, kind of the beginning of the story with the Wanderer mentioning, like, not, w not being willing to open her heart to the contrast of the Wanderer leaving at the end and Kaito having to, like, lose her again, which the story has drilled into our heads. Mm -hmm. He will not lose another friend. He will not lose another friend. He will not lose another friend. First of all, he lost another friend because Tameshi died. Spoilers. I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but secondly, then he loses her again. And like you said, it kind of seems like he's not even going to look for her right. as the primary search <clears throat> that he's making. Because he also lost a friend, I would say that he would consider her a friend, mm -hmm. in Tamiyo. And, so, and he then has to leave his sister as well. And that was an emotional experience. So I liked the emotion. There was like almost a moment of me um, choking up a bit. Almost. And I'm a pretty emotional person. So like that's probably not a high bar. But I... <laughs> but that's a lot of loss for one person. Yes. And, in a short period of time. And again, I guess I, 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 I didn't write this down. But I want to point out like these stories did a great job of introducing a brand new planeswalker and making you really care about them. Yeah. I mean, it was seven stories worth of Kaito, basically. Yeah. But it still was like, yeah, I care. I care yeah. a fair bit about Kaito here. And his sister. Correct. She's not even a planeswalker. Correct. So. Iko was pretty awesome. Even though these stories are very heavily care about planeswalkers, please. Planes... Planeswalkers. <laughs> So much so that, like I said in the last video, every villain's uh, story or, or plot has to involve planeswalkers. Right. It just has to. It has to do it. So, hey, guess what? <laughs> That's the end of this story. Uh, we will be back, as I implied, hopefully next Monday. I, I make no promises, but we're trying. We're trying to do two a week. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do with our schedules, but we are, we are trying to get them out as uh, expediously as possible. Uh, and so hopefully you all are enjoying them. Uh, like I said, don't forget likes and shares. Very helpful. If you liked it, that's what the like button is for. If you, um, if you shared it, that's what the share button is for. If you know someone who would also like this, <laughs> that's what the share button is for. But regardless, thank you. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, that's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, hey, don't forget, everybody, being able to get invested with a new character over the course of seven stories, discuss their highs, their lows, your positive opinions of them, your negative opinions of them, and to come along with us on this ride one way or another and stick with us as we go into the side stories for the next three videos as well is a really great way for you to join us as we show off our... Hashtag Vorthos Bride. That's right. Sorry, I punched you a little. I'll live. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, that is the end of this particular episode. Thank you all so very much for being here. As always, we hope you enjoyed. More so, as always, we hope that we hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please give us your opinions. Do you agree with the things that we said? Do you disagree with the things that we said? Is there something that we didn't bring up that you feel like we should have talked about? Um, that was like a big thing for you and you can't believe we missed it or something like that. We want Please to hear from comments. you. Yes. Continue that discussion with us and your fellow commenters. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell on this channel and Video Games for All and Gluten Free for All. Links down in the description box below or they'll be popping up here on the screen in a second. Um, thank you all so very much once again for being here. And... For now, from us here at the Geek for All family of channels, I have been Joe. And I'm Amy. And as we always say, in whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody.